You guys seen this? I was browsing fucking Brian Callan's Instagram account, and for whatever reason, Brian Callan's Instagram account has this fucking horrendous picture of himself that I don't know why he uploaded it and why he shared it and why it's still up on his fucking grid. Because he looks horrible. Like, ridiculously horrible. I don't know why this is up on his page. It's really, really bad. So this is the picture when it, when it kind of finally loads. On my way to Nashville in a sky blue sweatshirt, the color softens my game face. Hashtag comedy. Hashtag Zany's comedy. Hashtag game face. Why do all these comedians like using hashtags? I'm not seeing anybody else that works in the entertainment industry who uses hashtags more than stand-up comics. Like, why do they persist with hashtags? No one's finding a shit with hashtags. Like, if you if people don't find your shit organically, they just don't find it. Hashtags don't really help. I don't think in any way, measurable way, shape or form. But I think it's whoever they hire these social media experts who just essentially scammed them out of money. The same guys they probably hired to figure out that Bobby Lee was behind the fire in a kid's subreddit or some shit. And then they say if you had hashtags, it kind of increases your out your engagement and shit. Really though, does it? At some point, if you've got how many followers has Brian Callan got? If you've got eight hundred thousand plus followers you have to just hope some of them see it or just you put some money behind your flipping post you make an ad or something you shouldn't be trying to use hashtags to jump on a fucking algorithm that's a little bit that's a little bit pathetic especially if you're like 50 years old or some shit imagine you're 50 plus years old and you're using hashtags like unironically like horrible but anyway going back to the grill brian callum man i said it before previously before on the pod Cancel culture probably doesn't work anymore and probably never did work. I think for the most part, if you have your own fan base and you have your own thing going on, I think it's basically impossible to get cancelled. I basically it's impossible to get cancelled because at the end of the day, your fans are your fans on your own platform. And as long as you're not involved in Hollywood or the entertainment industry, you should be fine. But if you are dependent on their fucking money or their jobs, then cool, you're going to be you're gonna be fucked. But one thing cancel culture does do it does fucking age you. It does sometimes break your spirit. It might, you might not be out of a job. You might not need to walk out. You might not ever have to go work at Target or Walmart or a Wendy's or a Waffle House or a McDonald's, but it will break your soul and it will age you. Like you look at Chris Leah, he looks like complete shit. And then you look at fucking Brian Callen. He's obviously never looked, been like the youngest looking guy, but he has shriveled up so quickly over the last few years. And whatever eyelid surgery he got, it was a bit of a scam. Because that left eye, that left eye is drooping super hard. And I think he said before, it's like a genetic thing in his family. All his family members have like that kind of like droopy, uh, that droopy eye thing. I think it's a Disney cartoon, right? That dog has got the kind of droopy eyes. They've all got the thing in the family. So clearly his genes are fighting against any kind of procedure he had. But whatever he did have is drooping. Or it could be, what else I thought, maybe this is a kind of byproduct of the surgery. Like a kind of one of the unintended consequences. I know for me, when I had my... um nasal polyps removed a uh, laser i had these pipes in my nose like glands right because of my hay fever and shit um they said you know some people actually when you get the surgery it actually makes them grow back more so you have to come back a second time which i was lucky it didn't happen to me but that could be a byproduct of the surgery where when you get your eyelids done it maybe makes them come back more aggressive so maybe that's why he's got this fucking really droopy saggy thing hanging on his thing but again like i said droopy sagginess is, uh, abound the face itself is horrendous he looks like absolute dog shit this is a fucking picture. And again, if you're looking at the picture, this is him on an airplane to go to a club or to go to a gig. So it's definitely, you know, you're a bit haggard. You haven't got much sleep. Like who in their right mind would think to take a selfie on the way um, to go to the fucking um, airport? No, or a selfie on the plane. Like that kind of horrible, you're stuck, you're damp, you're sitting in a horrible seat, your kids are screaming, you're hungry, you're tired. You may be sweaty. Why would you think a, a selfie would be a good idea? This is probably what makes it me, may, makes it seem like people like this are like so addicted to attention and to like validation for people. Like this one thing that I'm like happy as well. My side of things where I've never really had that bug. <clears throat> as much as I love to do this side of content, and obviously I like the sound of my own voice. Clearly, I don't think I need attention that badly. Like I'm not stuck. Like it's not my like life force. Whereas I feel like these guys, their life force is the attention that they get from people even the stuff i'm probably doing now anything it's just a good anything they just need to always be in front of a camera 
or performing in some way, which is, this is basically what it is. It's kind of like a performance. Hey, look at me. I'm old as fuck, but I feel young. Uh, 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 hashtag, uh, uh. It's that kind of idea, right? Like, I'm, I'm called Brian the Kid Callan, but I'm not really a kid because I'm old as fuck and I made up the nickname. It's that kind of thing. But that's why I'm happy to be like a regular civilian. We kind of pursue, uh, pursues this content stuff on the side as like a little hobby. Because when you're a regular civilian and you don't really care about this sort of stuff, you can maybe just avoid, you know, maybe posting a selfie of yourself during, you know, before you jump on a fucking four hour flight to another side of America to kind of perform for 12 people. Do you know what I mean? You could probably like leave it alone and be like, you know what? I'll leave it for another day because I don't look my best. But when you're these guys and you're fucking, um, what you call it? You're 50 plus years old. The game never ends. Legitimately. This is what, this is, this is the kind of the dark side of Hollywood. The dark side of the Hollywood entertainment industry is that it never ends. Because that's the thing about these guys to realize. They're successful with the podcast itself. They are very successful with the podcast itself. They could just rest easy, collect money from sponsors. You know, maybe they could spruce up the show, change up the format. They can maybe take it on the live tour, which I think would do really well if they did a live, live tour. Don't be, don't be fooled. They could do really well if they did that. But for whatever reason, they are addicted, addicted to the fame and to the attention, and they want to be involved. I'm sure even to this day, Brian Callen still wants to go back to Hollywood. He still wants to be a part of that movie industry, even though it's probably going to bring him more pain if he goes back in there and gets involved in the press cycle because the first thing they're going to be asking about is that Los Angeles Times article and did he rape those women, yes or no. Do you know what I mean? That's definitely what they're going to be asking about, but he still wants a bit of it. He still wants a piece of it. It's like a never-ending fucking desire. Like that, that, you know what I mean? Even a tap gets turned off, you're still there underneath it, sucking waiting for it to kind of drip down on you. It's kind of a bit sad. I'm not going to lie. Because if it was me and I was his age, I'd be like, nah, I'm going to chill. I'm going to chill. I'm going to enjoy my fucking, um, I'm going to enjoy my, um, I'm going to enjoy my podcast money and just live my good life that way. I'm not going to try and get myself back out there and be that guy, all this sort of stuff. It's just not necessary personally for me. But hey, what can you do? But one thing's for sure, that eyelid surgery didn't work. Um, there's no difference whatsoever. He probably would have. He probably would have. He probably would have got a lot more if he decided to go to Turkey, right, and go see the mandem and get a full head of hair. That probably would have made way more difference to his overall look and what he looks like. Because you know the 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 lack of moisturizer on the face, the the fucking the eyelids, the stress behind the eyes, the deadness of the eyes. You know what I mean? You can't lie with that shit. It just can't lie. It just is what it is. Um, you know what can you do? But hey, what can you do? Uh, big up him. Then you got here comments also for Crystalia. What Chris Alea say here? He's back outside now, feeling confident and happy. He says, LMAO, bro, will you take a pic and stare at the lens, not you? Okay, I guess. Let's see the comments. What is people calling him a diddler? Let's see if people call me did or did Brian Callan delete the comments? Let's see. Oh no, he didn't. <laughs> Look at the comments. People here. Every single dad's profile picture. And I've also said here. It's basic. Callan is such a better. Okay, people I, I guess Callan liked that one, didn't he? Is he Callan liking it? Let's see. It's definitely him liking it, isn't it? It has to be. Hey, Super Chat. Big up, JC. Shab would be the pervident king if someone introduces him to meth. From what he says on P slash cast, he seems to just do any drug anyone introduces him to. Weed, EDs, test, alcohol, HGH, act. Yeah, is that 100%? I agree with you. You know what's funny with Brendan, though? I remember in the early days with Brendan, that's a really good comment, actually. Big up JC for the £10 of Super Chat. I appreciate you, brother. You know what's funny with Brendan, though? Early on the podcast, early on, he used to really be, like, proud of the fact that he never drank alcohol. He used to, like, be like, oh, I'm a comedian, stand up, you know, we're in these clubs and bars, but I'm just focused and clear. And this was, I think this was even before you'd be surprised. I think he was getting a lot of gigs early on when he started first doing stand up. And obviously, he was, like, kind of in a way set, insinuating that. The reason why he got so far in stand-up early was because he approached it like an athlete and that he was also not distracted. Like, he just focused on the sets and getting out there because he wasn't drinking, he wasn't doing anything, so he could go back home, wake up early, go do more sets. You know what I mean? He was on the grind, doing it, doing it, doing it. But then, it just took one thing to break him. Now, suddenly, there is no more of that willpower, I don't do this sort of thing, like, I'm better than you because I don't do this sort of thing. Brandon. It doesn't exist anymore. It's completely gone. And the funny thing also is that, if I'm not mistaken, the, the person, you know who killed him on the alcohol? You know who killed him? Who broke him? Who broke him? Joe Rogan. I remember specifically, Joe Rogan 
went around, started sharing a story of like one of his pre stand up special, um, no, stand up performances rituals. And one of his rituals, I remember he used to say, was number one, nicotine. Remember, he used to, Brendan Jerog used to say, oh, sometimes he likes to like take a pull on a cigarette. I think he might have got it from like Chappelle or something, or Dave Chappelle, where he likes to take a pull of a cigarette or maybe smoke one cigarette before he goes on stage because he doesn't usually smoke. And that nicotine hit will kind of get to his head. You know, you know Joe Rogan, he flipping uh, rationalizes everything. But he said that really used to work for him. Another thing he used to say that he used to really like Joe Rogan was that he used to like, I think, saying, I think having a shot, I think of, of tequila and chasing it with a beer before he got on stage so that he kind of got into the mood of the crowd because he came, he came from a workout, he came from doing jujitsu, living quite clean, but he wanted to kind of acclimate with the club in- environment. So he'd take a shot and a beer. And as soon as Brendan heard, Joe Rogan will, will pull on, will take a puff of nicotine, a puff of cigarette for the nicotine and also maybe drinks a whiskey or has a couple of shots of Zambuca or tequila or fucking a beer. Suddenly, it was okay for Brendan and he didn't stop. He went running. That basically how it started. I'm I'm pretty much sure of it. I'm pretty much sure. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing as well. It's like Atlantis, Atlantis Rising Pod says Bill Burr pretty much stopped boozing when he had a kid. I kind of admire again, Bill Burr is something I really rate because he's so refreshing to listen to in his podcast. Number one, he talks with talks about his wife with respect. He absolutely loves his wife. He loves his kids. He talks about them like he loves them, like he enjoys being around them. They're not like little tyrants or little annoying people that just kind of suck money from him and shit. Like he loves his kids. And also, he absolutely um, gloats and really celebrates the fact that he was able to kind of um, sack off, um, you know, drinking. Like he's absolutely proud that he's sober. But he always talks about how, you know, it's hard to be when you're on the road and shit and he goes to watch certain games because, you know, one thing Bill Burr does is quite cool. Wherever he goes to perform... He likes to take advantage of it and go and see the local team, whoever that plays there, or maybe see a, a band that's going to play. So it's pretty cool that he does that sort of stuff. But, you know, the flipping willpower of Brendan is completely gone. But anyway, continue. Let's see who liked that post. Oh, no, it wasn't Brian. It was someone else. Okay, cool. Let's continue. Let's see if someone said something rude to Chris here on this post. Um, Brian Callen is the hottest person. Brian Callen knows lols. That's a good one. Um, I sink downwards when you are in your late 60s. Another one. Also, my man's had the grand, the Grande Canyon between the eyes. Um, looks like a silver picture alert. Crystalia, pedophile. <laughs> you stare at children. <laughs> right, like a real predator. <laughs> okay, cool. They don't they don't stop with the pressure. <laughs> you, you look like a predator. Okay, cool. I like that. I like that. They don't stop with the pressure. They really don't stop with the pressure. Holy shit. Okay, who's the other one here? Add one more. Left lid, left lid is up to its old tricks. That one lid, though. Probably should have had both lids done. Hey, man, look at the camera. You take a selfie, that's for sure. How'd your eyelids have foreskin? <laughs> Bro, don't sit past row two. Those lids could use another round. Brian working on his third family look. <laughs> Left that looks like it's, it's had a blackout shade. Just waiting to drop. Baba, get some Botox on those 11s. Oh, okay. 11s, I mean, I guess it's this, right? This like, this little uh, crow here. What is it? <laughs> People are taking it for the comments. Oh, I'm Brian Cannon. I'm so cool. Time for the touch up on those lids. A little chapstick wouldn't hurt. Yeah, man. Those are the those are the whitest lips you've ever seen, though, isn't it? Right? Right? Look at that. Jesus Christos, mate. Um, uh, I hope no one tried to take over the plane. It did find it interesting to be alpha. Also means to not moisturize, to not use chapstick, to not I don't know line up a beard a little bit. I don't know. I mean, get a haircut or something like that's also to be alpha. Just to wear fucking sweatshirts and you know t-shirts and shit and carry backpacks. I don't know. I find that really interesting, isn't it? These alpha podcasters don't use chapstick, don't don't moisturize, don't really do any kind of self care and anything. Just okay. We just roll out of bed and we do the we do our hardest. Um, I hope no one tried to take over that plane. They're gonna have their hands full. Uh, quit doing the face that you're ruining your lid, your left lid. Goddamn! Do you get them black carrots through security? Is it true that nose continues to grow as we age? Yeah, Brian Cass nose definitely did age. That's grown. Rings lids are looking really heavy, and those lids are closing like the curtains at the end of a play. It's funny if you said that at the end of your career. That'd be funny. Quality content. Buy your lids. Are kind of heavy, huh? Be your lids. Okay. 
people that talk like this, like that talk like fucking comedians. I don't know, kind of redacted, isn't it? Right? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, what what can you do? 